Coronavirus, COVID-19, that seems like that's the only thing in the news these days. We could really use a little good news today. And boy, do I have good news for you. Hello, this is LUPC, Angela Johnson reporting. The good news that I wanna talk about is about something that happened over 2,000 years ago. You may ask, how can something that happened so long ago be good news today? Well, I'm glad you asked. In order to answer that, we're gonna be using some resurrection eggs. These eggs are plastic eggs, and in each egg you won't find candy, although I do love candy, especially chocolate. But inside of each egg is something that will help us tell the good news story. So let's get started. Egg number one. A donkey. For this, let's go live to Zach and Josh. Zach and Josh. This is like the donkey in Jesus room. A long time ago, Jesus told his disciples to go get a donkey that never been ridden before. And he said, if anybody asks you, why are you getting that donkey? Say, the Lord needs it. They went and got it. Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem and everybody was saying, Hosanna, blessed he comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Wow, that was an awesome report, guys. Now let's see what's in egg number two. Coins, silver coins. So let's go to Braxton and Wagner to see what they have to say about these coins. Braxton, who was Judas? Judas' disciple. Waylon, what was Jesus doing on the Mount of Olives? <laughs> Praying. Braxton, how did Judas betray Jesus? Um, he bring the soldiers and kiss them on the teeth. And Braxton and Waylon, what did the priest give to Judas for betraying Jesus? Coins. What? 30 silver coins. 30 silver coins. Thank you, Braxton and Wayden, with help from Mom to Annika. 30 pieces of silver. How much is that worth? Well, in Exodus, it says that 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave. Well, I did some research to see about what would that be worth today. And the number varied greatly, anywhere from $200 up to $15,000. No matter what the amount, Jesus Christ is worth so much more than that. You cannot put a dollar amount on Jesus' worth. Well, I think we're ready for egg number three. What's inside? A cup. So let's go to Jolie's right now. She's going to tell us something special about this cup. The significance of the Passover cup. The Passover cup is one of the central symbols of the holiday known as the Feast of Redemption in the Jewish religion. The biblical mention of the cup is in the New Testament. When Jesus celebrated this feast with his disciples, he raised the cup at least twice during the meal to make important statements about himself. Luke 22 verse 17 through 20. But in Luke 22 verse 20, it says likewise, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is in the New Testament and my blood which is shed for you. Happy Easter! Jellies for your report. Now, let's look in egg number four. Praying hands. We certainly do need to pray now more than ever during these troublesome times. What do these hands have to do with our story today? Well, Major is going to tell us the who, where, and when. Major? I'm going to tell you about Jesus in the garden. After his supper with the disciples, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray with them because he knew what was about to happen next. The Bible says Jesus prayed so hard that he sweated great drops of blood. Jesus knew he was about to feel everything the entire world has done wrong without ever doing anything wrong. All of our pain, shame, and guilt was about to be placed onto his shoulders so we wouldn't have to carry it anymore. Instead of praying with him, the disciples fell asleep. 
He just felt alone and abandoned by his very best friends, just like we would feel. That's what happened in the garden. Thank you, Major. That was very informative. If Jesus Christ himself prayed, well, we certainly need to. In fact, in Matthew, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Now we're ready to look inside egg number five. Looks like a little piece of leather. Well, this represents the whip. And James is going to tell us about the whip. Mark 15, 15. So Pilate wanted to gratify the crowd, release Barabbas to them, and they delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. This tells us that the scripture, by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. He did all of that for us because he loved us so much. Thank you, Jace. We didn't stop there, so let's look in egg number six. The crown of thorns. Jocelyn, will you tell us about the crown of thorns, please? Thorn symbolizes all the sins that we have done. Like one thorn, like this, for every person in the world, and the sins that they have done. Jesus took all that pain that he didn't deserve for sins that he didn't do so that we could go to heaven one day and be with him. The crown of thorns was dried and way longer, so when they put it on his head, they pricked him very bad. But he did it because he loves us so much. He loves us so much that he took the pain that we deserve to save us from an eternity of pain. Miss y'all. Can't wait to see you at church again. Bye. Jocelyn's work. He did it because he loved us so much. He loves us so much that he took the pain that we deserve. Thank you, Jocelyn, for reminding us just how much Jesus loves us. Now, let's look in egg number seven. Three nails in the shape of a cross. To help us with that, we're going to go live to Lexi. Lexi. Hey, Easter, everybody. So today I'm here to talk about the nails and what they have to do with Easter. First of all, the nails were needlepoint nails, and they were square. So that made them sort of easier to drive into Jesus' hands, and they were square, unlike the circular nails we have today. They used three nails to crucify him. Two nails in his hands and one nail and one nail for his feet. The nails were very rusty. The nails in the crucifixion also has a spiritual meaning. It's this. Sometimes you do wrong things and sometimes you don't obey God. But God is perfect. Jesus never did anything wrong. But Jesus was nailed to a cross. Three nails were driven into his hands and feet. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter with your family and friends. Thank you, Lexi. We know that they used three nails, but that's not what held Jesus to the cross. It was his love for you and me. Now let's look in egg number eight. A die. We're going to let Charlie tell us why this is important. Charlie? Hi, this is Charlie, and I want to tell you about this egg. A dice. What is it? A dice. A die. Die. Okay. What's important about this die? What did they do they, for the resurrection? They rolled it. Mm-hmm. And whoever goes first, they have to take their crown, their uh, anything that's on him. His belt? Yeah, his belt and his sandals. The sandals? And this word, this big old word. What is that word? Grambling. Gambling, yes. Okay. Very good. You think Jesus was embarrassed and how heartbroken? His heart was broken. Yeah. 
You want to tell everybody something? Happy Easter. I love you. Bye. I miss, 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 and I love you, miss, miss, and I love you, Bye. Miss Gayla? I miss Gayla. With help from Mom Lisa, gambling for Jesus' clothes. You know, that was done to fulfill a 1,000-year-old prophecy. So now let's look at number nine. What's inside? A spear. For that, we're going to go live to Noah. Noah? My resurrection A is red because it represents the blood of Christ which flowed from his side when he was pierced by the soldier's spear. It represents his love for us and how we were saved. Thank you, Noah, for that brief report. We only have a few more to go. Number 10. A piece of cloth to represent the linen. For this, we're going to go to Rider and Valor. Okay, can you tell me about what did they do when they took Jesus off the cross? Wrap him up. What did they wrap him in, Ryder? Can you say that louder? A linen cloth. That's right. And then they put his body where? Where did they bury him? Uh, in the tomb. In the tomb. Good job. Can you say... Happy Easter. Happy Easter! Thank you, Ryder and Valor, and with help from Mom, Tabby. We know that Jesus left the grave clothes behind in the tomb. Now, let's see what's in egg number 11. A stump. For that, let's go to Abby May. Abby? Jesus was placed in the tomb three days prior and on the Sabbath day, which was Sunday, and at sunrise, a mighty earthquake, and an angel came down and rolled the stone away. The stone was rolled away. Thank you, Abby, for that uplifting report. Only one more egg to go. Resurrection egg number 12. Let's see what's inside. Nothing. Did I drop it? Did I lose it? I don't see it anywhere. No, it's supposed to be empty. And to answer the question why, well, let's see. Well, we'll go live now to Gabriel and Matthew for the case of the empty tomb. <laughs> hey, Jeff. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm reading a mystery. Do you like mystery stories? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love to read mysteries. This one is called The Case of the Empty Tomb. Want to hear it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's continue. The story begins very early in the morning on the first day of the week. Jesus had been crucified and buried. Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' followers, went to the tomb where Jesus was buried. When she got there, she saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Peter and John and said, They took the Lord's body from the tomb, and I don't know where they put him. Peter and John raced to the tomb. John got there first. He looked in the tomb and saw the linen wrappings lying there. Then Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linens that John had seen lying there. As he investigated further, he saw that the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was also folded and lying apart from the other wrappings. After Peter looked around for a few minutes, John joined him inside. When they were sure that the tomb was empty, they left and went home. Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she cried, she looked inside the tomb and saw two angels sitting there. One of them was sitting at the head and the other at the foot where the body of Jesus had been lying. Why are you crying? The angels asked. Because they've taken my Lord and I don't know where they put him, she answered. Then Mary turned and was about to leave, and when she saw someone standing there, it was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Mary was thinking that he was a gardener. So she said, Sir, if you've taken my master away, please tell me where he is so I can go to him. Mary, Jesus said. When Jesus spoke her name, Mary knew who he was. Jesus said, Go and tell the others that you've seen me and that I'm going to return to my father. Mary found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them the message that Jesus had told her to tell them. So did you figure it out? Why was it too empty? The tomb was empty because Jesus is not dead. He's alive. He's risen just like he said. And that's all the case of the empty tomb.